And that story there at the beginning that uh, a special accident scene expert has been hired by the Watson family just to get a sense of what might have happened uh, yesterday uh, in that uh, fatal car crash. Well, to help us understand uh, the process of analysing an accident scene, we're now joined uh, from our Seapoint studio by Walter Pretorius, who himself is an accident reconstruction specialist. Uh, Mr Pretorius, thanks so much indeed for joining us. Welcome to the programme. Thank you. All right, so look, you don't know anything about this particular scene, but in general, if we can talk about the work of pe that uh, people like you do, when you arrive at the scene, uh, sometimes it's a day, two days later, can you still gather enough evidence to tell a story? We certainly can. Um, it's with, with most accidents, uh, all accidents, we work back from uh, the result. So the final rest position of the vehicle is always important. The um, angle at which it struck uh, various objects, um, um, tire marks are very important. Uh, that would indicate maybe braking or steering or trying to avoid the collision. Um, so there's various uh, um, bits of evidence that we can gather even days or weeks after a, a collision occurred. All right, so what, what would uh, someone like Mr. Lotter be looking at in this particular incident? When he arrives there, what are the things that he starts taking notice of first? Well, um, if I was in his shoes, yeah. um, the first thing I would do is to have a look at the angle at which the vehicle struck the, uh, the concrete pillar um, and the approach um, of the vehicle. Um, it certainly seems as if uh, there's no evidence um, of any um, a, attempt to avoid the collision from occurring, no tire marks, no brake marks. Um, and it, uh, from all reports, it looks like the vehicle was deliberately steered into the, um, into the, uh, the, the pillar of the bridge. Um, I would certainly uh, take a very close look at the approach, um, uh, yeah. approach angle of this vehicle where it, uh, it struck the bridge. Um, and also the extent of the damage to the car. So instinctively, what do people generally do when they suddenly realize, you know, often we look down for a second and we look up and we see a pillar in our way. What's our natural instincts if we're trying to avoid that? And what evidence would be left behind? Well, your, your natural e instinct is to hit the brakes as hard yeah. as possible and to steer away from, uh, from the hazard. Um, it's, it's almost impossible for someone to, to drive uh, um, towards an, an object and not feel the, the natural urge to hit the brakes or, or try yeah. and avoid this, uh, uh, this collision. All right, so uh, this morning when Mr. Lotto was being interviewed, he said that there are a number of things you have to consider. One of them could be that the driver of the vehicle might have a medical situation that plays out. That, that's certainly a possibility. Um, I mean, if, uh, um, if a, a driver loses consciousness, then obviously um, yeah. the vehicle will just carry on straight and hit into whatever it comes into its path. All right, so no, no signs of braking and it looked like it went straight. Uh, you talked about the angle of uh, impact. What does an angle of impact to tell you? So um, if the... If the vehicle um, veered from its uh, lane of travel um, rather close to the to the pillar, veered um, at, at, at quite an acute angle to the right, um, that would indicate a number of things. One being that it would have been a lower speed impact because of the way that the vehicle could turn um, in a shorter distance to get uh, to that angle. Um, also, uh, it's possible that the that the vehicle was travelling too fast for the bend. The, the road bends to the left there, so the centrifugal force would, would force the vehicle to the right to, to start um, side slipping to the right if, the, if it's traveling fast enough. Um, the, the, the angle would also tell you that, uh, you know, if it, if it was quite an acute angle, mm -hmm. um, maybe the, the driver had swerved out for, uh, for something else in the road um, and then hit the, the bridge. But in this case, it, it, um, it certainly looks like the vehicle was... Um, that you know, the latter wasn't the case. Uh, the vehicle was 
looks like the Liberty steered yeah. um, into the path of, of so the bridge. So the, the, you would have seen the pictures by now of the vehicle itself. And, you know, from a layman's view, that kind of damage in a car like that implies an awful amount of force which could only be caused by speed. Uh, that, uh, that, that is true. Um, mm. We must also remember that this vehicle hit into a, an immovable object, so right. all or most of the kinetic energy that the vehicle possessed was transferred into crush. Um, that being said, that um, you know, the right side of the vehicle impacted the bridge, um, which resulted in the vehicle uh, rotating in a clockwise manner to its final rest position on the, uh, in the left lane. Um, it certainly does look like uh, not a low speed impact. Uh, I wouldn't venture a guess as to what the speed would be, um, but it, it's certainly not a low speed impact. All right, so what else would you gather or try to gather? I hear that there could be security camera footage uh, being so close to a national key point such as the airport. That would be one thing. What else could you be trying to gather at this stage? Well, um, we, <laughs> I would, I would, I would not leave any stone yeah. unturned. I would, I would, yeah. um, I would definitely look at the vehicle. Uh, maybe some data that can be recovered from the vehicle's uh, um, um, computer. Yeah. Um, uh, some close, close examination to the the damage itself, um, even inside of the vehicle. Yeah. Um, airbag deployment. Um, a, a, a number of things uh, has to be investigated. All right. So if the airbag doesn't deploy or uh, what, what would that be? Because it seems to be standard nowadays, isn't it, that most vehicles does have an airbag? Yes, no, certainly. Um, yeah. if, if the airbag didn't deploy, it could be a number of reasons. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't venture, I guess, as to, as to narrow it, narrowing it yeah. down um, at this stage, but that would certainly be a red flag for me, and I would certainly investigate that uh, uh, further. Is there anything else that can help to paint the picture that we haven't discussed? Look, with, without, without a version of, um, yeah. of the driver, it's, it's, yeah. um, it's always very difficult to, to try and put, um, put these, uh, these things together. Yeah. Um, but it's not impossible. Um, yeah. we, we, we can get as close as, uh, as possible to the, uh, um, to the real reason. Um, it just depends on, on how much data and the accuracy of the data mm -hmm. that, uh, that is available. Um, but I would certainly, um, as you mentioned before, I certainly look at uh, video footage because that, yeah. that will uh, give us a whole lot of more information uh, than what's available at the scene at the moment. Right. I mean, you know, depending on the age of the car, a lot of these cars have uh, a lot of electronics on board now. What sort of information do they carry nowadays that again can assist? Well, um, uh, so the vehicle would be able to uh, store data as to um, when the ABS was uh, um, activated or, you know, when airbags deployed, when the, the pretension of the seatbelt and at what speed that occurred and that sort of stuff. Um, there's, there's a whole, whole list of uh, different sorts of data that the, yeah. that the vehicle records and stores. Um, it is, uh, it's quite a process to get that uh, information out into and to get it into a, um, a report form that makes sense, but, but it is possible. And I would imagine for, for in this particular incident, the autopsy also is quite important in helping develop the picture. Well, certainly, um, like you mentioned before, yeah. if there was a medical condition, um, you know, that would certainly um, uh, shed some light on, on, on the reason why the, the collision occurred. Um, uh, reconstructing a collision is is an attempt to uh, to say how a collision occurred, not why. Mm. Um, but that would certainly uh, give us a, a better understanding of of what what actually yeah. occurred there. So this reconstruction, what do you use? Do you use computer modelling? Do you take a, a actual Toyota and and uh, take it out there and see what it would do? How do you actually remodel or reconstruct? Um, so, so there's different types of uh, crashes. Um, in yeah. this case, uh, we would call this a, f um, a full impact, um, where the two colliding surfaces um, reach the same uh, velocity at maximum engagement. So, um, in order to, for instance, calculate the speed at which this vehicle struck the the bridge, um, you would need to do an energy 
uh, calculation, kinetic energy calculation. So the manufacturer, when they do their crash tests, um, they record stiffness values of the um, uh, certain parts of the vehicle. Uh, like a frontal impact, you would have a stiffness value. We can get that from the manufacturer yeah. and do a, an actual measurement on the vehicle um, to ascertain as to how far the crash actually reached. And based on that, we would know how much kinetic energy was spent and we can convert that back into a velocity or speed. Oh, I see. So, so, it's uh, quite involved. <laughs> so typically, let's say you get all the data that you need. Um, how long does this kind of story take to, to, to be able to paint a picture? I suppose within a few days you've got a gut feeling of what might have happened and then you start to confirm what your instincts are saying. Yeah, you, yes, you're right. Um, yeah. it, it all depends. Some accidents um, are quite simple. Um, this one seems to be a bit more complex. Um, mm -hmm. I would imagine just getting all the information together, the data required to, to for instance, calculate the speed, um, just gathering the data may take mm -hmm. up to a month or two, um, depending on how, um, how readily available all that uh, crash yeah. values and uh, that's a, from, from the manufacturer. Um, then again, I mean, there's, uh, this is certainly not a, yeah. um, uh, not a usual accident. It's very yeah. unusual that there's no tire marks leading up to yeah. the point of impact. Um, so yes, I, th I think there's a, a, a whole a wide net needs to be uh, cast to uh, to investigate this thing thoroughly. Right. You would be able to tell if the car went over something uh, on the way and lost control. That is something you'll be able to assess quite easily. Um, well, looking at the the damages on the vehicle, yeah. that may prove tricky. I mean, um, if the vehicle drove over something before yeah. impact. Um, you know, that evidence may have been destroyed in the, in yeah. the final crash. Um, so, yes, so it, it all depends. Um, I haven't had a look at the vehicle. Yeah. Uh, uh, all right, so quite a lot of work to obviously. do. But uh, certainly science is there to assist, but it may take time, I guess, is, is uh, the message coming through. Uh, thanks so much indeed uh, for sharing your thoughts with us and uh, giving us an idea of just how complex these type of reconstructions can be. Thanks for your time. Thank you very much.